if I have the official time, it is now 10 o'clock. And I want to welcome you to the Raleigh Municipal Lighting Plant Board of Commissioners meetings of uh, Board of Commissioners meeting, July 17th, 2013. And I declare the meeting open at 10 a.m. This meeting is also being audio and video recorded. Okay, the first item on our agenda today is welcoming our new commission member, Robert Snow. Thank well, you. Welcome aboard. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here to serve with you, John. I guess the next item agenda. One, one thing on that too yeah. is um, the, during the communication with the new commission, most of the things that I send out will be through email. Mm -hmm. If that's acceptable to you, I mean, most of the communication is done through email as far as agenda items, um, agendas, meeting, posting, things like that. So I, if you have any issues with that, or it, please let me know and we can, we can work it out different ways. Yeah, I have, yeah, no, I have no problem with that. That's, that's a good way to do it. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. As long as there's no deliberation, we're, we're fine. Yes, we're fine. Yeah. I think you know, I called you, Dan, yesterday, and I went on there, and I, I couldn't call Bob. So, you know. I, no, that's fine. I don't mind so, that at all. So I'm going to go, I'm gonna have to go through you. So. Yep. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Got anything else to say, Ken? No, no, that's it. All right. Item number two is election of officers. I'm assuming that's going to be the chairman and clerk uh, for yes. the board for this upcoming year. So, could I place a name on nomination? Bob Murray is chairman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about Ken, you want to be chairman? Ken? No, no, I don't know enough about it yet. Okay. You know. I want to give you the opportunity. I know, but, you know, I just don't know enough about the legal end of the thing <laughs> that you seem to know so much about, you know? Well, I'm not sure I know it all either, Ken, but. Yeah, we, but, you know. We try. You know more than I do at so, this point, you know. So, uh, and I've, I'm coming along slow, but, you know, it's, uh, Okay, so that is uh, in the form of a motion, Bob? Yes. Yeah. How about a second? And do you have a second? Oh, yeah. That? I'll second that motion, yep. Yeah. Okay, motion made and seconded to uh, nominate uh, Robert Murray as the chairman for the Municipal Light Board. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, Bob. <laughs> I know, I know. No, I'm, I'm not really opposed. I don't mind doing it, I have to tell you. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I just will abstain from the vote, so I don't look like I'm voting myself. So, Okay, the next office that we have would be the, uh, the clerk. I'd like to nominate Ken Keys. <laughs> You willing to take it again, Ken? I mean, I, I think you do a great job. Yeah, so. well, yeah, I'll take it, yeah. Okay. We'll keep going. Be, all right, then we'll I work together on this and yeah, see I if we can uh, iron some of the problems. Out. Yep, I will second the motion. Okay. So a motion to be made and seconded to nominate Ken Keyes as the clerk of the board. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Opposed? <laughs> Ken, you have a new clerk. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, the clerk still. How's that? Not there you go. And we're gonna we're gonna nominate Bob to be a member. So. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> All right. So the uh, item number three on the agenda today is a review and approve meeting minutes from previous meetings. Uh, uh, Bob, before we move on, can yep. we? Um, I'd like to amend the agenda if if. Uh, it's acceptable to the to the chairman to okay. add one agenda item to the agenda that um, uh, Mr. Snow had asked me to add. Okay. And that would be discussion of uh, the solar project on Central Street. Okay. We don't have that on here at all, do we? No. Uh, we can do it in general terms. Okay. Because it wasn't on the agenda, we can do it almost like a citizen's query type thing. Okay. Uh, I, we can't take any votes or anything like that, but at least if it's an, ex an explanatory question, we can we can try to answer. I think it was discussed uh, more of a discussion than yeah. anything else. Yeah. Two yeah. meeting two meetings ago, um, um, wasn't it brought up that yeah, I think it was? Uh, I think you brought it up to um, 
Mm-hmm. It was probably a topic in general. It was mostly in general terms, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were still working on the contract I yeah. at that time. So. Okay, yeah, we can add that. Okay. On uh, agenda item number three, there are no minutes to approve, review, or approve. Okay. Okay. That makes it easy. So item number four, review and approve OPEB language to existing OPEB fund. And I'll leave Dan sent out a uh, letter to approve to uh, start placing some money into our OPEB account. And it requires a board vote to accept the provisions of Mac General Laws 32B, Section 20, and to establish an other post employment benefits liability trust fund. The Rowland Supply Plant, I don't know if the Board of Commissioners hereby votes to accept the provisions of Mac General Laws Chapter 32B, Section 20, and to establish an other post employment benefits liability trust, OPEP. The RMLP Board of Commissioners designates the treasurer of the town of Raleigh to serve as the custodian of the RMLP's OPEBLT funds. Until such time, the board votes to designate another custodian as provided by Mass General Law Chapter 32, Section 20, 32B, Section 20. The RMLP Board of Commissioners authorizes the general manager to take all necessary actions to appropriate amounts to the fund in accordance with the act's accrual study and any future updates and to take all necessary actions to administer the fund in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 32B, Section 20. Is there any discussion? Pretty straightforward. It is straightforward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you going to need? Nope. Do you want to add there? Nope. Or anything like that? All right, then I will uh, accept the motion to uh, create the, the trust fund. I'll make that motion. Who Second that motion. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We just need to sign it. Or get the original day or not. Yeah, either one of these. Fine. Fine. You want to use this one? Yeah, that one's fine. Okay. As long as it says the correct date at the bottom. July, July 17th. 17th? Yep. Okay. The next uh, agenda item, item number five, is net metering policy for installations of 10 kW to 500 kW. Basically, uh, Raleigh Municipal Light Plant right now only has a net metering policy to address um, renewable energy generators up to 10 kW of generation size. That's correct. Um, we have had interest from um, businesses in town as well as residents to go above the 10 kW limit that we currently have for a policy. Mm-hmm. So what I plan to do was uh, actually draft this policy to address those systems above the 10 kW and put a high limit on a 500 kW because we d- I don't anticipate having anybody that's going to have a 500 kW system installed anywhere in Raleigh. And if we can limit it to 500 kW, then we're basically, not that we're not going to allow it, but we're basically we're keeping that limit to 500 kW. Right. Well, it's, that's the threshold, so we started at a start somewhere. I know when we hit the 10 kW, uh, I actually had introduced a, a motion to uh, look at anything above 10 kW on a case-by-case basis rather than saying just we're limited to 10. Mm-hmm. I know at one point we were, we were working on that, that policy. Uh, there was a, an individual that came to us who wanted to do something with wind and wanted to do a little bit bigger project than 10. So we kind of made that exception that we would look at those 
anything over 10 on a case-by-case -case basis. As it turned out, it, it, nothing materialized from it. So, but no, I think it's a good idea, Dan, to, uh, to have it up to the, put a cap on it. Okay. The, and it's a little bit more than the 10. I mean, 10 is pretty small. The 10 is really small. 10 is looking at a residential household that may, uh, uh, most residences can fit around 7 kW or so in their rooms. Uh, yeah. Some of the houses may fit more, but 10 kW is, is a pretty good number for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I did take the test. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to uh, page 6. And it's item number 5B, and then it's actually the third science. And uh, I just had a question as to, and there's, there's a word there that I'm not sure that fits. Okay. It's uh, customers will be built based on the rate applicable to the, their class of service. I'm just trying to locate where you are. It's 5B. Yeah, it's the third third sentence. Beginning of the third sentence on the B. Will be billed. The customer will be billed the minimum charge to have called to the customer's class of service. We're on the same page. Yeah, right there, right? No. You could have a couple of them. Exactly. That one is different than the one you posted on the unit. Uh, oh. You have a different copy line? I have, I have, well, I have the copy that I took off the internet. I mean, off my web. Off oh yeah, email. right there on this on the third line down. Yeah. The custom the customer will be billed based on the rate equal to. Yeah, it should be eliminated. They should be eliminated. It should be their class of service. Okay. So I did pass. Yeah, you did. And yeah, one other. And I think this is this may maybe right. I want that. The very last page. Under G and the last bullet. It says by signing of this agreement, and I was wondering if we should add the word the, the by, signing by, by signing the the by the signing of yeah by say. the signing of this application. Okay, so it's rather than by signing. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, I don't know if it's a correct grammar or not, but either either add the or remove of one of the two. It doesn't really matter. It's, well, they both result in the same, I think. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I said the, by the signing of. Yep, uh, that's fine. I don't know if that's, it, it, I don't think it makes much difference in it, it to be perfectly honest with you, but mm -hmm. it just makes more sense to me when I, when I say by the signing of. Okay. Rather than just by signing of. That, that's just me, I guess I'm a little, a little quirky in there. So, everybody's had a chance to read it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's basically based on the current policy that we have with some additions. Um, there's some additional language in there for caps. So we're able to, if we have a number of industrial customers come in and say we want to put a large solar array on the building, the first mm -hmm. one's mine. But when we get to a point where the solar array starts to, or the solar arrays starts to um, degrade our distribution system, then we want to be able to say, we're going to cap it at the amount. Absolutely. And that's, there's language in here that says we can only go to a 2% of our um, peak of the past year. Yep. So uh, let's say our peak was 11 kW. Mm -hmm. So we would limit the amount of solar installs to 2% of that number. Okay. Which it, is, it seems to be a, a industry standard as far as that goes, at least a municipal standard is for what I've checked into. Everything else is pretty standard in the, in the policy. I didn't know if you had any other questions before we, but um, everything else is pretty standard language. Okay. Uh, but, okay as you know, by now I, I did read it, so. Mm -hmm. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it looks very good. So if there are no other questions or discussion, I would entertain a motion to accept the uh, net metering policy as presented uh, at this meeting. Can I make that motion? Motion made. And I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll, I'll call for a vote to accept the net metering policy as presented by the general manager. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. So now we have policy. That's good. Okay, item, agenda item number six. And it calls for a board vote to determine future meeting locations and time. What, can I speak on this? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, I brought up at one of the meetings, when I was a participant in the audience, um, about three, two or three months ago, um, about the time the meeting is held at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I felt that the, the meeting should be held in the evenings, okay, so they're accessible to the general public. Because the general public, if they wanted to come to a meeting like this, they have to take a day off. Because most people work during the, during the daytime. So I felt that you know, we should have the, the public, that there should be public meetings at night accessible to the public. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to Dan about this, about you know, having maybe cameras installed here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said we do a live broadcast from here. I think would be good. And I think yeah, I think you explored, talk to Janet I, about it. I did. I emailed back and forth with Janet, who was with the uh, RMLP. Uh, well, you all know where Janet is from. Mm -hmm. um, RCM. Uh, thank you, Raleigh <laughs> RCM. Um, basically, what we had discussed was um, putting some type of camera in this room that would be accessible from. Um, I guess you have a video room at the town hall. It will be accessible yes, from the video room at the town hall to be able to broadcast the maze live. At this current time, that's not not feasible. Um, basically, what we'd have to do is run some kind of wire, either fiber loop, from the town hall to here to make that to make it work. Because an IP addressable kit, because I had suggested an IP addressable camera, which is simply a network camera that the town would have access through through the IP address of the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and what Janet said was the video and audio of that type of camera is not really um, broadcast quality. Mm -hmm. So what she, and, and basically that's where it ended. So I mean, the only way we could do it would be run a fiber loop from the town hall to here. Is that feasible? Yeah. I would say it's feasible. It's not that far. It's maybe a quarter mile down it the really street, so. It really isn't yes. that far. Yeah, it's not that. And the purchase of, purchase of you know, fiber, 12 fiber cable. And it, uh, we probably have enough space on the poles between here and, and the town hall on Summer Street. So mm -hmm. uh, those are all really tall poles. So it might be something you want to think about. Would you, um, I'm just thinking a little bit ahead as well. If we do this project and we were able to broadcast live, uh, we would make it accessible to other town departments as well if they wanted to use it for a meeting site? Um, I'm, I'm asking the question more than anything else. Well, a little bit of history on the building itself. This, what we're sitting in right now, used to be the warehouse. And uh, basically when we got to the point where we wanted to do some handicap accessibility and uh, the main reason we went with that was because one of the commissioners was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. We actually put in a temporary ramp out front that we would mm -hmm. put up the day that he, the meeting was and then take it down. Um, so he went forward in uh, with the handicap ramp construction and changed this warehouse into this meeting room, the next meeting room, and of course the crew, the crew room. And uh, it made it. Uh, handicapped accessible, and we also opened this room up at the time that we did it. There was a separate door from the front door and a hallway that came down here. And it was the two offices were on either side of that hallway. The remnants of it are out here just before you go through the door again. Okay. And uh, the front door and the side door and this door were all key to light. So that if a board or committee or whatever wanted to use the room, we just give them a key. They could come through the front door, open this room door, and open this back door as an emergency exit, and have not have any other access to the building. Okay. Now the bathroom is out there, and so it made it, it worked out very well. Mm -hmm. But through the years, uh, they decided to expand the office in our front and took out that hallway which now kind of makes it a little bit more difficult 
only that you give the key to somebody, they've got to come through your, your working office right, right. to be able to get here and to give you the second egress. So, but other than that, it, it was originally set up so that it would be an extra meeting room for okay. um, the town boards. Well, let's see, um, until we can you know, find out more, have a temporary go back to the Board of Selectmen and propose on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock so it'll be access and be live broadcast to the public until such date we can you know, use this. Yeah, well, we, can, we can explore the, uh, the possibilities of doing the, the fiber route uh, and things like that. And yeah, in the meantime, if it, the board agrees, uh, we could uh, can do that. So first I would propose um, to change the meeting times to Wednesday evening at night at 7 o'clock. Okay. So that would be my, my first motion. The board wishes to. Ken, have you got any discussion or any comment? No, I just, I don't, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's all I gotta say. Been this way for years and years and years. Just because a couple of people don't like it, it doesn't mean it it should be changed. All I have to say. <laughs> okay, good. And a few words. Uh, actually, then when I was making, when I was the uh, the manager, we always had meetings at, at night. Uh, I think it was the second Wednesday of the month when we used to meet. And uh, so it would be. Uh, accessible to the public and basically I think a couple of the commissioners at that point were still working anyway and uh, they couldn't make daytime meetings at that point so but, uh, after I retired uh, things kind of changed around a little bit but I've been here many nights till 11 12 o'clock at night back in the days when things were when dealing with the issues uh, on, on power supply and things like that, and the, the substation work and all that kind of stuff. But. All right. So you, I heard a motion. Did you? Did you didn't make a second, did you? No. And you're not going to make a second. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's the way it is. Okay, then. No, it's, you're certainly entitled to your opinion. No question about that. Well, I'll second the motion. And we can give, at least give it a try and see how it works out. Okay. Uh, so the motion has been made and seconded, and I guess I've said enough, and you have no more comment? No more comment. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to uh, move the meeting location to the town hall on a Wednesday night. I'm not sure which ones we want to pick, whether it's a first one, second one, whatever. Uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, for live broadcast of the light board meetings. What's the historical and mostly the second? Well, that's what we were doing it then, and I think we've been meeting on the second Tuesday. Second anyway. Tuesday. So yeah. if we just move it up one day, uh, I think that would be okay. No, Wednesday or Tursday, I want to make sure the board is... Doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I don't think it makes much difference, really. Okay. So, this, so I'd assume this would be starting in August. Yes. Okay. okay. So the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, two for one against. May I interject something? Yes. Uh, do you, I assume that there is no board or anybody using the town hall meeting room at that on Wednesday nights generally? I don't believe so. The no. only, you know, about the only board that uses that meeting room on Wednesdays uh, is the Finance Committee. Finance Committee. And they're only busy right at the end of the year and okay. the beginning of the next physical year. And I'm not sure which, which night they meet. Okay. Whether it's the first, um, they only meet once generally. Sometimes they meet more water than board that. Meets, water board meets Tuesday nights. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're at, they're at the uh, mm -hmm. Center Street. Yeah. And that's another issue too that we might want to address. Yeah. The light department's thinking of buying some fiber. Yes. It would be a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could get the water board to kick in some money to help mm -hmm. as an enterprise fund. 
and run a loop out to there also. Mm -hmm. So that would give us an actually another meeting room that the town could make use of. Sure. And get their broadcast. Yeah, live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we might want to look into that, at least from a feasibility standpoint. Okay. And see if it'll, it may help. Yeah. I know I, I know Bob gets gets comments. I get comments. People stop me on the street all the time. <laughs> uh, saying, you know, oh, I saw you the other night on TV and yeah, you know, I keep watching every Monday night. Okay. And I go through it's, a market basket, I get quite a few comments about people watch it. They do watch the selectmen's meetings and they do watch the, the light board meetings okay. and the water board meetings. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I always kinda 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 kid about the uh, well, it's not going to be anything. It's the highest rated uh, show in Raleigh <laughs> on Monday night. But it, it really is when you, you know, we, a lot of comments. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. People like reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and I guess that this is the new, the new program that's out. Uh, some kind of a survival thing. Naked and afraid or something. Oh, oh. As long as I were. Not like that. Meeting is not naked. We'll be all yeah. set. Yeah, we'll be all yeah. set. Yeah. I'm not going to go there if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff that's coming out there is unbelievable. So I will um, post the August meeting for the second Wednesday in August. Uh, okay. 7 p.m. at the town hall. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Dan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the next item is number seven, and it's department write-offs needed, need commissioner's approval. So I'm assuming this is the year-end, Dan, write-off things that were... It's, um, this is something that is new to the board. I don't think the board, or if the board has done it, I don't know if you've officially done it in the past as far as having a, a, a actual agenda item on the, um, at a meeting in actually voting to approve the write-offs. I'm not sure, and maybe you can kind of tell me the past history, but. Well, I haven't been around for, what, 15 years since I retired. And, and my comeback the last, the last couple of years, three years, four years, whatever it is, uh, we have not. Okay. Prior to that, when I was manager, we would do the write-offs and the board would approve them. Okay, all right. Uh, at a meeting, but. I haven't done it since then. All right. So well, restarting the practice, uh, mm -hmm. and this is the first time. So these, this will be a little bit higher than normal because this is something that we haven't done in the past few years. As so far they've, as I they've actually been, been carrying them on the books. We've been carrying them on the books, some of them for uh, three years or so. Yeah. But um, I will distribute this, and you can take a look at. It. And there's actually a place for the. No, I'm sorry. I only have one. That's oh, oh okay. <laughs> I'll pass it around. Trying to conserve paper. Yeah, I mean, and and we may know, even when I was manager, we may not have done it every year. Okay. We did it at some point. It's what we're as when we started to get up there a little bit, we would do, do the write-offs and then bring them off the books again. So basically, what you're going to see is there is there's four tables on the sheet. There's the exhausted collections, which we use a collection agency that we send people that have. Um, run up electric bills and then moved out of town, leaving us mm -hmm. with a substantial electric bill. So we send those out for collections. Yeah, we, I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, the uh, company we used. The second one, the second table is bankruptcy. So these mm -hmm. are uh, customers who have declared bankruptcy and we have no way of collecting that, mm -hmm. that amount of money mm -hmm. since they declared bankruptcy. The third one is basically people who have um, died in while they were at their home. So, I mean, they and since been uncollectible. Mm -hmm. And the last one is foreclosed on. Okay, we do have a few uh, items that we can use. Uh, one is the liens, uh, basically. And bankruptcy, you're at the mercy of the court mm -hmm. at that point. Uh, the taxes and the lien are supposed to take priority, uh, but sometimes there's nothing there anyway. So it, you just can't get it. But uh, okay, I mean, I, I'm surprised Dan that it's else. Uh, right. That right. It's only 17. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. yeah. Copy one. So this is basically something that we've exhausted all efforts to try and collect this money. 
and we just basically can't. When the auditor does the yeah. audit at the end of the year, he comments on the fact that we had carrying a lot of this yeah. debt on our books that basically can be written off. And the auditor comments on the fact that you should have a board approval of the write-offs on, and basically that this is why we're at this stage. Okay, is there any comment, Ken? Or? No, it's something that's got to be done. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, if that's the case, I will entertain a motion to uh, sign the list of write-offs uh, for July 17th, 2013. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor, second by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Agenda item number eight is manager's contract changes. At our last meeting, we negotiated uh, my employment contract, and there was some, one when I went back to the contract to make some um, edits as far as the vacation time, what I, what I was granted at the last um, negotiations. I noticed that there's a few things that I needed to change in my contract. One of them was, the date, the date actually specified June first for the contract, mm -hmm. and we, when we talked in our discussion, it was July first. Yeah. So that is one of the changes that I had to make was okay. make it instead of June first, July first. Mm -hmm. um, I added the vacation time in there, and as I said in my email, in the vacation time in the contract, it specifies that it runs concurrent with the actual contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The RME, RMLP employment policies goes with your anniversary date. Okay. So, and I'll ask for your, basically your blessing on this is that what I did is I took my current vacation time that I had that you had granted me when I was hired mm -hmm. and I just added to that to equal the four weeks that you granted me in the negotiations. Yeah. So that way it would run from July 1st of this year to June 30th of next year and that would get four weeks during that time span. If that's acceptable, I, I didn't think there was any other way of really correcting that. Those are the only two things I, I changed in the contract. Yeah, I think we should be probably following the policy uh, rather than uh, the contract terms. I think we should, you know, the, the old terms. I think we ought to try to keep it all uniform. Mm -hmm. So you want to change the contract language to specify that it's the anniversary date? Well, it's, what do you, what do you think? I, mean, I guess six one half does the other thing. I mean, I, I just want to. I just want to yeah, understand. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So in other words, the anniversary date would be July first. No, the, yep. my anniversary date would be my date of hire, which is right, right, November first. Right. I just thought for the purposes of the, uh, the vacation time, you move it to July first. Just for the vacation yeah, time. Just for the vacation that's time. The, um, if you read uh, for, the, for the policy purposes. Um. To follow policy guidelines. Right. The only thing with my vacation time, it, it, it goes against the RMLP policies as it is, um, basically because I'm getting a, a four weeks vacation time. Right. The policy states you, you get graduated, uh, gradual increases in your vacation time over time. Um, so that goes against the, the RMLP policy as it is. Mm -hmm. Do you want to align that with the policy? Or do you want to change the basically the date to say June or July first? Uh, I'm not. I don't know how you want to correct that. I mean, it's more or less like a red circle thing, basically, because we hired them uh, right and gave them an extra some extra benefit uh, to come on board at the time that we hired them. I, I, it's not, I mean, it's not hard to track in the office. Basically, the, the vacation time will go July 1 to July 1, concurrent with the contract. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that, I think that's okay. Okay. I do, yeah. Yeah, it should yeah. adhere to the policy. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. You feel comfortable with that, Dan? Uh, is adhere to the to, to my contract or to the policy to the RMLP policy. I just want to be clear. RMLP so. policy. Okay, so that would be November. Right. See that that's, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, second yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I yeah. see. I see now. The I RMLP see, yeah. policy states that your contract year is your anniversary date. Right. I understand. That. Okay. All right, Bob. Are you? <laughs> I'm trying to think down the road here yep. you know, to, a, to a problem, and I can't foresee one. I think if we leave it at the contract language originally, yep. if, and, and go for another year and see how it works out. I mean, if we, if we identify something that might be an issue, okay. then we can modify it after that. I think that'll so, work. Yeah, because my contract okay. is up every year. It's, it's one year renewal, mm -hmm. so it's... Yeah. Every year, when you could actually, you know, next year change it if you like, but we can talk about changing it. Yeah, yeah. So we're address it at that point. Let's you know, leave it that way until then, and then yeah. want to change it, we change it. We can go from there. Okay. Ken, you got anything to add here? <laughs> well, you know, okay. I'm following the whole conversation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to um, actually sign this? particular contract in order to make it or do you want to just have me do the edits and use the one that you already signed uh, I'm asking the question uh, well we have made changes to the original right so why don't we uh, have and you made the edits in, the, in, this, in this one yes why don't we sign that one okay that way it, it carries on from from now with the changes in it rather than trying to Put two together and say, well, this is the old one. We signed it, mm -hmm. and then we get the new right. one. Right. We didn't sign, but this is what mm -hmm. it says. And I, I agree. So I think it would be much cleaner mm -hmm. if we just uh, just signed a new contract. Okay. So, are there any discussions about that? I entertain a motion to uh, approve and sign the manager's new contract for 2013. I'll make that motion. Second the motion. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. Call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. So have you got the original again? Either one doesn't matter, they're both the same. Sign this 17. Would anybody like a signed copy a co of the, the contract for the records, or or is do you have the copy that you have sufficient? I don't think it matters. Okay. It's a public document anyway. Right. point item number nine will be a discussion on the total solar project on Central Street. So Jed, Dan, I, I requested uh, this to be placed on the agenda. So basically, again, uh, just in general terms about the project. Well, I'm actually kind of glad you brought this up. Uh, we have um, the project itself has been, uh, a little bit of history on it, has been going on since I believe June of last year, as far as discussions mm -hmm. on 
the project itself, the, the purchase power agreement and the interconnection agreement has been in negotiation in different stages of um, discussion from that point. Um, and what we've come to right now is a, a project at Central Street at Country Gardens um, is a project of one megawatt in size in a, sol in a field that is owned by the Country Gardens. Uh, the uh, PPA, or the Purchase Power Agreement, has been negotiated to a point where it's, it's acceptable to us, uh, to the RMLP, um, and it's at a price that I feel is um, acceptable to our ratepayers, which is right now six and a half cents with a 2% escalator annually. Mm -hmm. um, there has been numerous discussions um, with the previous, um, I'm not sure what to call them, the previous entity that has brought this to Raleigh Municipal Light Plant. That entity is, is, is changed from Capital Energy Partners to Sundurant Solar. Mm -hmm. Sundurant Solar is a much bigger company. They're the actual company that would be building the actual project or contracting to build the actual project. Um, they've, um, we've negotiated the final interconnection agreement and actually signed a final interconnection agreement with Sunder and Solar. Um, there are a few issues with that interconnection agreement that I'll bring to the board's attention and that is, um, first and foremost, w when we were negotiating, um, and I'm sorry if I'm pausing, I'm just thinking mm -hmm. it's an open meeting, I don't want to get into too much of the actual agreement itself. Sure. Um, but suffice it to say that the DOER has changed its rules and regulations as far as its solar renewable energy credits program. And they have since developed a phase A and a phase B program. Phase A program, the interconnection agreements had to be done executed by June 7th of this of 2013. Mm -hmm. Our interconnection agreement was substantially agreed upon but not executed by June 7th. Um, so we were in discussions with the with Sunder and Solar about that. Um, and if we ever talk about this in an executive session I can give you the final details about what we talked about. Um, but suffice it to say that we signed the agreement and we dated it as of the date we signed it and that was last week. We um, forwarded that agreement or actually Sundurance filed that agreement with the DUER in order to see if we get, could get into the Phase A uh, SREC program. Mm -hmm. If the DUER decides that they do not want to honor that agreement as a Phase A agreement, it will be pushed to a phase B agreement or a phase two agreement. Um, what Sundar and Sola has um, relayed to me about that was, if it goes to a phase B agreement, then the, they would want to come back with us and renegotiate at least some portions of the PPA, the price, maybe the escalator. Um, because the Phase B SRAC program is a little less monetarily, <laughs> it's not the same price as the Phase mm -hmm. A program, so it's not it's not going to be the same. I and mean, they feel that they don't want to take that financial loss; they want to pass it on to us. Um, what I had told them was that I I would not be willing to discuss a an increase in the PPA price if it pushes the phase B because an increase in price to us, I mean, we've already agreed, uh, when the PPA was first negotiated, it was negotiated at six cents flat for 20 years. Uh, when it changed, uh, actually, I'm sorry, it changed, it was Solar, Solar Energy Partners when it first started, then it went to Capital Energy Partners. Mm -hmm. They lost their financing, then they got new financing, and the new financing wanted to renegotiate the PPA at, the, at this price, at the six and a half cents. So we've already renegotiated the PPA at a higher rate than it was originally. Now Sundurance is saying that, well, maybe, you know, if we don't go to phase A, we want to go to phase B, maybe we want to renegotiate it again. I said, 
I'm sorry, but I, you know we've already given that up to you as far as renegotiating the six and a half cents. Really, don't I don't think it's financial responsibility of me to go any higher than that because right now in the open market we're only paying four and a half cents, five cents. So why do I want to make my customers pay more than we really need to? Mm -hmm. And I think we could do better uh, on a project than what they're talking about right now. So basically, let me really keep this in general terms. Sure. Your piece of your piece of property, okay, off of Central Street, mm -hmm. and that piece of property, a solar array will go into that piece of property. The landowner has made an agreement with a company to come in, and they are going to rent, I take it, that piece of property and put a solar array up. Yeah. Okay. And then there's an agreement between. Raleigh Municipal Light and that company about the price. Mm -hmm. Okay, how how is the land treated um, for tax purposes? That is a discussion that I know that um, either Capital Energy Partners or Sundurance has been in contact with the town as far as how they want to treat that. Okay, there are. And I don't feel real comfortable commenting on it because okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I mean, as far as because of different varying projects, I mean, if it was a project that was owned by the municipality, I think it would be treated different than if it's a private developer. Right. Um, I know that different towns have classified this differently as far as it for tax purposes goes. I'm not sure what the actual, the general law specifies as far mm -hmm. as how this is treated on the assessor. As far as you know, how they treat the taxes. Is there anything in the uh, Massachusetts general law? I'm sure there must be somewhere about that. It's probably uh, the board of assessors would be involved in doing that. Okay. Uh, I know when it's almost like state property. We have state property in Raleigh. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, the Raleigh State Forest is an example. Right. Okay. And even with the federal government on Plum Island. The, the portion of the land that's in Raleigh. That's uh, Raleigh's land. And they have what they call a, a pilot, which is a payment in lieu of taxes okay. uh, scenario that they use. And I think uh, even with the phone company uh, mm -hmm. and the gas company, right. and those people that have infrastructure in a municipality mm -hmm. would pay some sort of pilot tax and taxes, uh, uh, payments in lieu of taxes okay. for the equipment that's there. And I know there's been some controversy about that within the past, I don't know, probably six or seven years. There was a lot of going back and forth with uh, lawsuits against the communities that were charging the taxes and the utilities were trying to get it taken off. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think at some point the, that has come to a full circle and it's beginning to settle down a little bit. So, but I'm not sure that the total overall picture of it. So, Sean might be able to help you out better uh, okay. as to where it's going on there. Yeah, and a little background. I know Sean has, they contacted Sean and then he has since forwarded that to the Board of Selectmen. I had talked to um, Debbie about it. Debbie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she had said that, um, and I had asked her this actually, that when the discussion comes up at the Board of Selectmen meeting, that you please know me that, no, let me know that so that I could go to the Selectmen meeting. Okay. And so that if they had questions, they could they could address them directly to me. But what I would say to them is that, is to keep in mind that when we're talking about a project that we're gonna be the sole uh, buyer of the, of the energy from that project at a certain price, well, I understand the town's position as far as taxing the, the actual, um, facility. not the, the, the facility, thank you, taxing the actual facility. But what I would ask them to keep in mind is that um, there at also could affect our prices that we're buying the power from the right. facility. Okay. So and that's, what, that's what I want to keep the town in mind. Of, yes, I understand that you need to tax the facility. And you could you, know, you could collect taxes from it, but I also want to keep in mind that mm -hmm. it also affects what we're going to be paying for electricity from that project. Okay. All right. Answered my questions, I think. 
If you have any other ones, please let me know. Either email me or give me a call, and, and I'll do my best and to explain. Tell you about, you can do one on one with Dan anytime. You know, okay. if you have questions like that, rather than get involved with a posting of a meeting and all that kind of stuff. So. Well, I thought it, I thought it needed to come back up again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you just you know bring it out here to, to talk about it to the public because I think it's going to come into the, everyone's venue soon. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ken, you got anything to add? No. Nope. No. Okay. It's just an ongoing project. It seems to be ongoing, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's been it's, talked about for quite a while. It's a very interesting process. Uh, when you first start, you're dealing with a company, and then all of a sudden you're dealing with company A, B, and then all of a sudden company C shows up, <laughs> and B is gone, and it's. Uh, Really, quite a process. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's a strange, strange dude, if you will, you know, for, uh, to get this thing settled down. But I think they're going in uh, a lot of places. I just read one about Sterling. Mm -hmm. so well, sure too. Yeah. It, it's, coming, it's coming up. Too, it so. is more um, more popular in the national grid territories and the NSTAR ending territories than it is in the municipal Mr. territories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just difficult dealing with the municipal territory. Not difficult, I don't want to say difficult, that's not the right word. But it just takes a little bit more time to deal with the municipal territories, the towns, right. utilities, than it does. You're dealing with a smaller time. entity. I yes. Mean, uh, the bigger companies are probably uh, promoting these things because they want to get it done and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it's a little bit harder with the small entities. Mm -hmm. They are improving the, the arrays from what they were when they first came out, from what I understand. If they and the IOUs are not under the same general guidelines as we are as a municipal. I mean, we have public uh, laws that we have to follow as far as these types of projects go. In an IOU territory, as far as the dealings with between the IOU and the sole developer, that's basically a private the you know business deal that they can just and, and with us it's totally different it's a it's a public it's document public it's, a, yeah. it's a public issue so okay is there anything else no. i don't have anything do you have anything Ken? nothing nope okay i guess we can entertain a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion second motion made and seconded any discussion hearing none i entertain it ask for a vote to return mm -hmm. the meeting at was it 10? 1052. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And we are adjourned.